Hey there, it's Valor here with cats.com, where we're all about cats. Here on this channel, I talk a lot about cats, <laughs> as you can imagine. And I talk a lot about how to optimize our life with these cats in our homes. Um, but I seldom talk about why. Why do we even share our lives with these animals? Cats are barely domesticated. We have not selectively bred them heavily to serve a human purpose. Instead, they have kind of come into our homes and hearts and formed this kind of symbiotic relationship with humans. In fact, you could say that in a, in a way, cats have domesticated us um, just as well as we've domesticated them. So in this video, I wanted to go on a journey back in time and explore the history of cats. How did we come to have cats in our homes? And how has our relationship with them evolved over the years? Let's start off by talking about the origin of humans' relationships with cats. The ancestor of the house cats that we live with is a particular uh, African wild cat referred to as Felis sylvestris libica. This is thought to be the direct ancestor of all domesticated cats living today, and you can still see this African wild cat living today. There's an obvious similarity to the cats we live with in our homes. It's just a little bit bigger, doesn't come in a, as broad a variety of colors, and is generally better optimized for its wild lifestyle. But not that much has changed. And while a lot of us associate the early history of cats and people uh, with Egyptian history, and historians previously kind of pinpointed the origin of humans' relationships with cats as ancient Egypt, it's more recently been found that humans seem to be hanging out with cats and having these close relationships with them much further back than previously thought. So while we used to think that the earliest cats as pets dated back to about 3,600 years ago, more recent discoveries have led us to believe that cats have been in human civilization since about the same time that humans started uh, living in more agricultural societies. So we're looking at somewhere around 10,000 to 12,000 years ago, cats start entering human settlements. The oldest evidence of cats and humans kind of living together as friends is about 9,500 years old. It is a Neolithic site uh, in Cyprus. In this burial site are human remains and a cat's remains um, both kind of surrounded by things that seem like they're associated with some kind of uh, ritual burial. Given the condition of the remains, it's thought that the cat was a pet, and this was almost 10,000 years ago. Interestingly, this cat specimen um, looks more similar to the African wild cat. It was larger than the house cats of today, so it seems that this cat had not yet evolved into the particular type of domesticated cat that we are familiar with now. Yet, it was still seemingly connected with people. So based on this evidence, we're thinking that the history of the feline-human relationship goes back as far as 10,000 to 12,000 years as they developed a symbiotic relationship with humans in agricultural societies. So unlike other animals that were domesticated directly by humans to make them easier to use for food or as tools in some way, Cats kind of came into our societies on their own terms. As mice entered human societies to feast on the grain stores that were starting to be kept there, cats came in pursuit of the mice and started living around humans as well. As humans recognized the benefits of cats in their settlements to get rid of those mice, their relationship seemingly grew ever closer. By about 1600 BC, the Egyptians had started actively, selectively breeding cats, and they're showing up in all sorts of Egyptian artwork being depicted as household pets. There's evidence that in early relationships between cats and humans, the cats who happen to have kind of cute features tended to perhaps get better treatment. So for instance, wild cat ancestors don't have little white paws, Little socks are a signature of domesticated cats. We're seeing a greater variety of colors. We're seeing more snub noses, bigger eyes, a more cute appearance. Seems to have been selected by those early humans. Makes sense. These cats uh, eventually spread to Greece and the Roman Empire and eventually made their way through Europe, 
Simultaneously, cat populations were joining households in Asia, and eventually they spread across the world as a phenomenon of domestication. Cats and humans just work really well together. By the 19th century, we started to develop more of a robust kind of breeding program. People would start to create certain breeds and the cat fancy emerged. And that brings us to the last century of change in the cat world, which has brought some pretty significant transformations. The topic of these more recent developments brings me to the sponsor of this week's video, which is Whisker. Since 2000, Whisker has been focused on creating innovative and solution-oriented products that solve real problems for cats and humans. They're the creators of Litter Robot, which is my top recommended automatic litter box, and they also offer a variety of other kind of technology-driven innovative products. The innovations from Whisker have made it easier than ever before to live with your cat and give them the best life possible. So if you're interested in checking out their line of US-made solutions-oriented products for cats, I would check out the link in the description and the pinned comment. So again, uh, the way that we share life with cats has not really changed all that much over the centuries, but there have been some interesting developments just over the last several decades. It might be surprising to realize that until just about 100 years ago, cats basically did not live indoors. And for the majority of cats, outdoor living is status quo even today. As we brought cats into our homes, we have leaned on other conveniences, but these are still relatively new creations. So cat litter was not really a thing until in 1947. 1947. This man invented kitty litter brand. Why? Because I'm Ed Lowell and I love your cat. And dry cat food did not really exist until World War II when metal rationing necessitated an alternative to canned cat food. Now canned cat food itself um, is a relatively new creation dating back to around the turn of the century. So this marks a huge shift for our cats where they are less self-sufficient than they were previously and reliant on the diets that we provide for them. Today, cats are more popular than ever before and they are the second most popular pet in the United States with over 46 million cat-owning households in the United States alone. There are an estimated 600 million cats living on the planet right now, and most of those are living on the street in a very similar way to the cats who entered our civilizations about 10,000 years ago. And in most cases, whether they are feral or stray or living inside of a home, they have this kind of symbiotic relationship with us, living largely independently on their own terms and adding some delight to our lives and appreciation of this creature that is so different from us, and yet so deeply compatible with humanity. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know if you have any thoughts in the comments, anything to add to this history of cats. And as always, if you're interested in diving deeper, I will put links to my sources in the description. Thank you so much, and I will see you next week. Bye.